Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video. We, we actually know so many of you are excited to see this one turned around. Well, we want to thank everybody for the love and support towards the company that actually supplied this engine to us. When I say supplied guys, we did buy it at their normal price, but they couldn't have been more helpful. They invited us in, they allowed us to film, which filled us with confidence. And we're now ready to start the process. When I say we, I'll use that lightly. I'm actually just about to go out and pick up some bits for another project that you're probably watching before this one. But regardless, Chris is going to crack on and start building this all back up. What I did do the other day, guys, off camera, and I completely forgot to actually time lapse it. Not that it would have made any difference anyway. Is I actually fitted that new cassette. And there's the old one there. And the veins on this side of it was a bit of a nightmare to change. I'm not going to lie. They was quite hard to line up. But that is now all back together. That was the last thing off. So that is going to be the first thing on. Of course, we got all them new gaskets for it. So as usual, we're going to leave you in Chris's coat of hands. He's going to try and video a little bit of it. And yeah. if he needs to cut any wheel, and he's going to try and get some of this back together because we'd love to get this back in there. It's going to have to be on time lapse though, Rob, because there's a few hours work there. Yeah, a... yeah, guys, actually, I should probably mention that. No one realises. Some people say, oh. Yeah, that's probably, you've probably got. That's the rest of the day, isn't it? Yeah, this side is probably the easier mm. side, exhaust, etc. But that's still probably an hour and a half work there. And then going around this side, which is actually the really difficult side on, because the inlet manifold has also got the wiring loom on it. And it, you, you know, this has got to go back together correctly. So like Chris just said, this is a good few hours work, but let's let him get on with it. It's actually the next morning, guys. I'm just making sure nothing falls out. It got really, really late on me by the time I got home, so I didn't even bother going back to the yard. But you can see I've got the wiper motor, the bumper bars in there. I've got a nice front wing in colour. The cap for the wheel. Also under there, there's two wheels, so a spare and a new steel to put on it. Uh, Backlight in there somewhere and a door in colour and a couple of other little bits that we needed. But I got almost all the way home and then Eddie called and said, Rob, I've got your bumper for the little ST line Fiesta. And he was in Seven Oaks. So I had to drive all the way back there. Little sneak peek there for you guys. I bought it home for the weekend. And I don't know why, oh, the wheel arch liner, the bumper corner. And the correct alley wheel for that car. I've also got the hinges in there for that door for the van. So fingers crossed. Only a couple of other little bits to get. Sorry guys, sometimes I get carried away and I completely forgot to mention, obviously some of you will know, some of you may not. The bits I'm on about I went to get are for the van, the Peugeot Boxer van. So like I said, first thing in the morning, I've just rung Chris and said, is there anything we need? He has said, pop straight round cat components and get an oil and filter for the Ranger. And he did say, this is just going to be to run it in and then obviously we'll do a full service after you've done a couple of hundred miles so i'm going to pop in here get a, get an oil filter and some oil and then uh, get us a coffee and we'll crack on
Guys, I've just arrived in. Chris nailed it. Chris, how long was your on it? I mean, I didn't get in till six. I didn't even start the comments till six o'clock no, last night. I think it was around about six o'clock. Six o'clock. Yeah, so then I had a bit of a clear up. It was obviously it's not it's not really really difficult for Chris, but I took this side apart, and you don't have one of these engines apart. No, so you had to and kind there is of a kind of sequence of how it goes back together. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. So what I said about the exhaust manifold being first, because you can't get it on with the bracket here for the alternator. New turbo, that's all on there. We are gonna prime that up with a bit of oil off, oh, yeah. aren't we? But we're gonna get it in the vehicle first. But he has got, what is, the table's empty, right? Yeah, all We've got the fiscus van and the pipes. All that's out the back of the truck, yeah. Right, so, so it is pretty much ready there to go. Like I said, I did just go and get oil in the filter so we're going to get the filter in there just easier to do it before it's back in the car you've already prepped that as well you've took I've the bonnet took, off no, i've done that first thing today so bonnets off yeah I've brought the rest of the bits in i've kind of laid the bolts out on the people often say how do you remember where everything goes but having it in order like that well, really we, does we help kinda, doesn't we it had, people commented about we do keep these for parts. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. So we had we had those bits in a cardboard box. Yeah. Because they were taken off the under the bonnet one side. These in another. These were left in this tray. So they're kind of the other side, this side of the engine. Yeah. And then they're what you done underneath. Yeah, that was awkward. And then we've kind of got under tray and wheel arches, front so bumper. So basically, guys, we try and place everything out where it needs to go in some sort of order, and it it really does help us out. So we're going to get that oil filter in, and I guess pull that in. Yeah, start, roll, it, roll it in. Roll it in and start the process of trying to get that great big lump back in that hole. Let's do it. Guys, the truck's in. The engine's sitting there. We've, gre we've greased up the dowels. We've got a jack under the bell housing and a gearbox just to give us half a chance. But quite a lot of you will, you fitter guys, you will know, and we are going to show as much as we can, but it's so, so difficult. Just this initial bit is going to be the hard bit, actually getting it in there and getting it clipped up to the bell housing. So we're probably going to be a little bit silent for a minute, just while we get it all lined up. And then we'll uh, cut in and let you know how we're getting on. We have decided to remove that mount from the engine and actually fit it to the, the vehicle first because that was a nightmare to get off. Yeah. Why it was on the car, that bolt that comes through that actual hole there is the one that we snapped a snap-on impact socket trying to undo. So Chris just managed to get that one undone. We're gonna crack on and try and get it sitting in place. I'm not going to lie, guys, it ain't very often that actually happens, is it? Well, that easy. What was that, 10 minutes? Yeah. It weren't easy. Let's, well, it let's wasn't, not pretend. but for such a heavy engine... That wasn't too bad at yeah, all. So. so we engaged it into first gear. We got the 15mm spanner on the bottom pulley, just in case we needed to slightly turn the engine to hit the spline. But somebody lined them up beforehand, and it went straight in. No, not even required at all. If you look through there, guys... You can see the tiny little gap there, but it's sitting on its dowels and it is almost all the way home. So we're actually gonna get a couple of bolts in it now. And the reason that gap hasn't completely closed up, if you look at the angle of the engine hoist there, we're actually pushing against ourselves a little bit there now with the engine mount. But Chris put the yellow strap on there just to get the engine completely level. And you probably wouldn't have seen it on time lapse, but he was actually controlling at what angle he wanted really the tilt of the awesome. engine with this strap, which is it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, really, and the, and the trolley jack, on and the, the trolley bed, jack, actually. yeah, on the gearbox. So, so the gearbox, I would say, had a good eight to ten inches of play up yeah, and down lot, yes. without undoing any bolts. So I know quite a lot of you was concerned about why didn't you pull it out with the engine and gearbox, guys? The front panel don't come off on this Ranger, it's actually welded on. 
and that would have been a whole nother story trying to get that out so that's the best way we thought of doing it and we've now got it sat in so it's going to be underneath me back to the painful <laughs> stage of uh doing up all the ballasting bolts but chris did actually do up 90% of the way, the starter motor bolts. So that big headache that we had there should be okay. So we're gonna crack straight on and get as much of this plumbed back up as we can. All the bell housing bolts are back in guys. Everything underneath is actually plumbed up. But if you remember in part one, when we actually pulled the engine, there was a pipe at the back of the engine. Heat that, hose. The heater hose that we actually had to leave that till last because it won't come off this end. We waited right up until the last minute, pulled the engine away and then removed that hose. And believe it or not, where we had them all tucked up here out of the way, we actually forgot about it. So. Chris has had to have his hands right down the back of that gap there, yeah. but you managed to get it on yeah. and put a clip on it. So it. we're just all- Just got to remember to put that clip back. That clip back this end, yeah, because that's where we tried obviously taking it off. But it is, it is all going quite straightforward. Well, we, we actually WD faulted everything when we took it apart, didn't we? So yeah. plenty of room in there, Chris. Yeah, so that's the bell housing done, isn't it? Yeah. We can go on to the engine mounts now. I think I've got the top starter motor, that pain bolt, just to nip yeah. up. And then, yeah, we can stick the engine mounts on it and then start piecing this all back together. But going very, very well, guys, and couldn't be happier at the moment. We literally haven't stopped, guys. Didn't want to just leave the time lapse running. We'd be filming a whole day, and you just you can't see lots and lots. But the hard, the majority of it, the worst of it, the most of it is actually done. I've even chucked five litres of oil in there for a moment. It does hold six point eight litres, I think, or eight point six even maybe. So just doing the pipe work now. Intercooler pipe there is on, connected up to the turbo. We've got all the fuse box put back. Um, all of the live cable, earth cables are all in position where they need to be. Pre There's pretty much the last hose that goes on the engine, Chris, isn't it? Um, then we're gonna... We've got the top hose on the right once the radiator goes in, but yeah, we're nearly there. You are sending me on a little bit of a mission though, aren't you? Air Comrade. Yes. This uh, vehicle held no gas, so it's either seals or the condenser's knackered. Condense, so condenser looks grotty. It does look grotty. Yeah. I'm actually going to whip it down to um, a local radiator place down the road and have them pressure test it because we don't want to buy one if we don't need it. And then, of course, I'm going to try and get one a bit local. You can see, actually, elements of uh, yeah. radiator in there, and it's yeah. definitely not that intercooler, is it? But so far, so good. All the clutch, I've jumped in, that all feels lovely. And you actually put it in gear, we rocked it. Yeah. And it was uh, and moving. Released, and made sure it released. Made well. sure it released, so everything seems to be okay. The auxiliary belt's back on there. Guys, do bear in mind, please do bear in mind what I said earlier. When I said to Chris this morning, what do we need anything? He said, Rob, just get an oil and filter to run it for now. We will be doing a full service on it yeah. once it's done a few miles. So. Hence why we haven't changed that. But we're just going to continue on. Probably got another another hour, hour and a half's work here, getting it back together, and then uh, hopefully should have it all complete. But we're definitely running out of nuts and bolts, mate, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, getting there, getting there. Guys, completely raw and live. We haven't even attempted. We have just finished. And straight away, as soon as Chris turned the ignition on, we noticed a little tiny diesel leak there where the spillback pipe just needed a tiny push on. Chris did say, obviously we've got the oil in there, got some water in it. It's all gonna want topping off once it's run up. But you did pre-warn me, mate. You reckon it's gonna make a bit of a, should be a bit tappy until, it is bone dry. So, mate, 
ready. I don't know how good that line battery is on there, but give it a go. And if it don't, we chuck a jump pack on it. But yeah, give it. Uh, injectors math sensor or yeah. injectors and crank it yeah do you know what shall we do that Chris yeah. let's actually unplug the injectors get a little bit of oil god they're tight one I'm going to have to cut guys I can't get them <laughs> can't get them off of that cut I'll cut and get the rest of them all four of those injectors unplugged and Chris is just going to try and build up a bit of oil pressure Have we? Leave it there, mate. I think so. That's a, that has had plenty there. Most people don't even bother, do they? So, one, two, three. Sorry, guys, I'm a bit close there, aren't I? A bit nervous. Yeah, go on, mate. Yes! Hey, oil lights out. Does sound a bit like a tractor at the minute. Yeah, oil lights out. Give it a chance to get round. I'm just going to check for leaks. Do you want to do a bit of lock to lock for the power steering? Yeah, I like that. Well, the bottom's nearly empty already. Actually, we leave it, give the engine chance. That's putting a strain on it already, isn't it? Is my light on? It is, sorry. Straight it up. Sounds sweet to not now. So turn it off, we dip the oil, top the water off, and then give it a proper run outside, yeah? That's it. Well happy there, guys, well happy. And no leaks, Chris. Well, that's good so far. That is a good so far. I think we established these extra aftermarket wires are for that camera, so we haven't even plugged them in for a minute. But yeah, that certainly went right down. The water wants topping off, but yeah, so far, so good. Hey, mate. How nice is that to be driven out rather than pushed? Clutch is lovely. What did it say on it? 10 2019. Yeah, lovely. Get the rest of it back together, eh? Yeah, it does sound right. Got any engine lights on? No, everything went out. It's going to want plugging in, though, isn't it? Just to check. There's no engine lights on That wires can't be for that camera, because look, put it in reverse. It's already got power. Has it, it come up then? Look, oh no yeah, AV2. I wonder oh, what that is then. That might be powered in here, that might be the camera's separate for Right, okay, good. Right, should we get the rest of it back together, mate? I think so. Yes. Are you sure you let it get up the temperature? Just, yeah. Just make sure we've got no leaks. Yeah. I'll bring it back in and... Um, yeah, once, once it's up to temperature, if it's all good, point it on, isn't it? Take so, it for a run. Take it for a run. Right, and obviously, get it clean, but we've still got the front bumper to do, haven't we? Looks like we're going to be bolting that back on just to take it for a run. Bring her in then, mate. So all we actually did in the end, guys, was put the bonnet back on, just go through, Checked all the fluids again, 
top the water off, it dropped down ever so slightly, check the oil, that was bang on. We put the bonnet on it and the number plate in the window. We're just going to take it out on a short road test. I have noticed that the side light, daytime running light, this side's not working, so a few little things to do, but again, the front bumper needs to go to the paint shop anyway, doesn't it? And we get that done, but let's get it out on the road and give it a give it a little run up and down, I suppose. We just drove about probably a mile. Yeah. Pulled over, just checked all the fluids. We're not gonna boost it up and start going crazy in it. Like Chris said earlier in the video, it's basically it's got all them new shells, cranks ground. These engines do want running into a degree, don't yes. they? So yeah, definitely. I'll probably do what's left of the diesel tank in it, snagging it. <laughs> and uh, Three miles. Yeah, and then and then probably just do a bit of an oil change, 245 miles of diesel in there. Very, I was just saying, in the first mile, we was only going very, very slowly, but quite, I don't really know how to say it, they're tyres. They're not oh, like yeah, off-road tyres. Yeah, they're not they? like a road tyre. Quite harsh. Yeah. But. It's a truck, isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful, smooth gears, clutches, lovely and drives bang on, just like we expected it to, really. The chap did say, till it went wrong, there wasn't actually anything wrong with it. There's no knocks, no bangs, and we're really, really happy with it, so. That engine is quiet, isn't it? It is quiet. When it first started up, it didn't sound very quiet, Chris, did it? Well, they're all a little bit like that, aren't they, when they're dry, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, even starting it up and leaving it to run for a little while, it was still yeah. a little tiny bit noisy, wasn't it? But it's once it warmed up, silent, can't yeah. hear a thing. No. Anything to add, mate? No, I think um, we're probably back to the workshop, have, an, have another eyes over it, check for any diesel oil leaks, etc. But yeah. I think I think we're good. We can't. Um, we're not crunching the number. No, it's in the next one, no, isn't I mean, it? We've got, got a few other work. bits and pieces to do, haven't we? Yeah. So, but this kind of wraps the engine side of the job up, doesn't it? Definitely. So, right, back to the office. So, guys, that is definitely an happy ending on that one. Really, really chuffed with how it turned out, and we really did knuckle down there and get that in. The plan was Chris was going to put it together while I was out getting them bits and. And then we was going to put it in on another day, but we just cracked straight on with it. And it went together really, really nicely. I mean, it's not very often you get a job with an engine where it just slots in that easy, is it? It fell into place. All the bolts went in lovely, yeah, didn't they? Nice, yeah. Leaving the engine mounts off really did pay dividends because we was able to lower it that little bit more so that we could get our hands right up around the back of the bulkhead. But out with one and in with another we have just pushed another one in and we're getting ready to crack on with that so we uh we won't drag the ending out on this one guys if you did enjoy the video please do hit that thumbs up i'm sure there's going to be one more video on that on that truck there's got to be because there's a bit of paint work to do don't forget if you haven't already hit the subscribe button follow us on instagram where we put out little sneak peeks throughout the day like subscribe share on all your social networking sites and we will see you very very soon in the next one.